quick update there will be no video from me tomorrow on friday i have some things i need to attend to around the house and monday is my birthday so if the news day is slow i may take that time to work on some other things but we'll see welcome to electrified it's your host dylan loomis so first up today quick update from yesterday in that benchmark article the cbo estimate was actually 30 billion not 7.5 Doing the math, that would be 8 million EVs in total. So just wanted to point out that error. Thank you, Ricardo. Holmar shared an anecdote that on 11.4.2, the auto wipers worked perfectly, to which Elon said, wipers will get super good. I know many people out there are rolling their eyes. That's because this deep rain neural net for the auto wipers at Tesla has been a thing now for almost four years. And we should have taken what Elon said back then to heart. Takes a surprising amount of deep learning to know when and how fast to move the wipers. So I'm thinking maybe two weeks. We have another spotting of the Project Highland. Do not read anything into the wheels just for testing. This is a blue variant. Most of the time we see a black prototype, but just wanted to pass it along. Not really anything new to highlight. We have Reuters reporting that Tesla is in talks with leaders of the regional government of Valencia, Spain to make an automotive investment. A Spanish newspaper is saying the investment would be a car factory and its total size could reach $4.8 billion. Then the very next paragraph, the Valencian government denied that there was an agreement sealed with Tesla. That could of course just mean that they're still negotiating and no agreement has been signed. VW has already announced a battery plant in Spain and Ford has been making cars cars there with plans to make some EVs there as well. So what do we know for sure? Tesla's next Gigafactory will most likely be announced by the end of this year. That's about it. Whether it's Spain, India, Canada, France, or any number of countries right now that Elon and Tesla have been in talks with, all we know is that one of them will be chosen probably in the next six to nine months. I'm not going to pontificate like I know which choice would be best. I'm not privy to all of these closed door conversations, but we'll find out soon enough. And the more options, the better. Just gives Tesla more negotiating leverage. Electrek apparently got its hands on some communications with suppliers, and they're telling us that Tesla is internally planning on 375,000 Cybertrucks per year, which would fit with Elon's prediction from Investor Day between 250 and 500,000. And for now, Tesla is asking suppliers to plan for meeting a base production volume of that 375,000. From this supplier leak, Tesla is planning to have its first Cybertruck release candidates at the end of August, meaning with the current timeline, the official start of production is planned for early October. And if we go back in history, we learned from Tesla that the way they define release candidates, it's basically the last step before official production. With the Model 3, Elon said that these release candidates were almost entirely built with production tooling. Of course, there are no guarantees the Cybertruck timeline will be the same, but when it came to the Model 3, those release candidates were produced in March. Then they actually had that first delivery handover event toward the end of July, so roughly three to four months. So of course, we'll just have to wait and see, but given that these release candidates could be coming out in about two months from now is a very exciting proposition. We also have 36KR reporting that Tesla is mobilizing many Chinese supply companies to build factories in Mexico, which we've known. Some supply chain companies have been asked to invest and build factories there, saying Tesla's pace is quite urgent. And if these suppliers don't respond in time, I'm worried about losing hundreds of millions of large orders. One of these suppliers, the Zhu Shang Group, has officially launched their project, saying that the factory could be able to start production in July or August next year, meaning maybe Giga Mexico could look to start production shortly thereafter. And 36KR is saying a number of domestic production line equipment manufacturers have already set up offices in Mexico responsible for things like design and after sales support. Perhaps most excitingly, they're saying Zhu Xiaotong, which yes, is Tom Zhu, is currently spending a lot of energy on the Monterey plant as you would expect. So we've heard rumors of Tesla maybe looking to set up a supply base in India, but here we actually have real things happening for the supply base for Giga Mexico. Something to watch in India, they're making a major push for battery energy storage systems for the next decade. Right now they're 
offering about $450 million to companies setting up best projects in the area. They're looking to expand to 500 gigawatts by 2030. Listen to this, from about 37 megawatt hours of storage capacity right now. Should be noted though, this plan for incentives needs federal cabinet approval. I think many of you have seen this already, but Adam Jonas in a recent Tesla stock note talked about his personal experience going to a traditional dealer to buy a car, got slapped with a dealer markup after they told him there wouldn't be one, and overall it was just a not good experience. Then Adam went on to explain why Tesla's process is just so much better. People pay the same price for the car, there's no haggling, all the things we've known about that the general public is still yet to understand. This video is brought to you by AG1. Hear me out. I've had more blood work done this year than perhaps my entire life combined dealing with this parasite. I've learned an absurd amount in one of my biggest takeaways, even seemingly healthy people can have nutrient and mineral deficiencies. Simply put, AG1 is a great step to ensure a baseline of daily nutrition, and I know taste is subjective, but I've had many green drinks in my day, and this is the one I've stuck with. Plus. All the cool kids are taking it. Look at this roster. Joe Rogan, Andrew Huberman, Lex Friedman, Farzad, Stephen Mark Ryan, Andy Sly, Dr. Know-It-All, and many others. Great minds, am I right? If you guys aren't familiar with rhodiola and B vitamins, you may want to take a look. Maybe this can be a drink to give you a midday energy boost when you hit the afternoon wall, as it has more than 70 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics in every serving. Most importantly, you can be assured you're drinking what's on the label. This is not, I repeat not, a guarantee with the supplement world today. You can use my link below to get a few free travel packs and a year of vitamin D3K2. If you do, thank you in advance. Here we have a second report done by the American Lung Association. Real quick, their findings. By 2050, as the US moves to an all electric future, the cumulative national public health benefits due to cleaner air could reach $978 billion in public health benefits 89,300 fewer premature deaths, 2.2 million fewer asthma attacks, and 10.7 million fewer lost workdays. So as I always say, the technology, the profits, the safety, it's all awesome, I love it, but let's not forget about this. It's a big deal as well. The full study will be linked below. Viva Technology is one of Europe's biggest technology and startup events, and for this year, Elon is set to be speaking. This event will take place June 14th to the 17th in Paris. To any of you looking for in-person or online access, I'll have this link below. AESC or Automotive Energy Supply Company is one of these battery companies that really gets lost in the shuffle when everybody always talks about Panasonic, LG, and the like. Well, AESC has been quietly building out pretty big plans for the North American market. This time around, they just broke ground on a 30 gigawatt EV battery factory in South Carolina for BMW. This one should be operational around 2026 and almost approaching a billion dollar investment, but they also have two other plants, one in Tennessee and one in Kentucky. So these three combined eventually may do 70 gigawatt hours of capacity every year. AESC started with pouch type batteries and is now also developing prismatic and cylindrical type batteries to cater to a wider range of customers. This range already includes customers like BMW, Mercedes, Renault, Honda, and Nissan. So just don't forget about little old AESC. Toyota is planning a $48 million investment for a battery R&D headquarters in Detroit. The lab will evaluate Toyota EV battery quality for North American standards and develop new battery configurations for future projects. Not going to be operational though until 2025. Zhu Zhang, the former vice president of NEO and other companies like Ford and others, has now joined Lucid Motors to start preparations for Lucid to enter the Chinese market. We've heard now for years that Lucid has had plans to build a car factory in China, and then December of last year, Lucid started hiring for certain positions in China. And now Reuters is saying Lucid will sell imported cars in China while also considering local production in the country. When it comes to GM, their executive vice president of manufacturing, Manufacturing said they have no plans to build or close any factories 
but rather rearrange the existing ones. They'll convert some plants to build only EVs and others to build both EV and gasoline vehicles. And just this week, GM committed to invest more than $1 billion for the next generation of gasoline-powered Chevy Silverados and GMC Sierra pickups. And he said, I'm sure we will do more all EV plans, but we assess every plant based on infrastructure, what it can handle, what we can convert, refurbish, or maybe even just expand slightly so that we can accommodate what we need for EV production and for ICE production. Of course, the first thing I think about is Tesla and what they did with Fremont, previously that being an ICE factory. Yes, they're making it work, but it hasn't been without its fair share of challenges and hurdles given the way the factory was set up initially, and of course the size. The truth is they're in a really tough spot and I do understand the decision trying to use what they have as efficiently as possible, but at the end of the day, it's just never going to be a competitive advantage not having purpose-built EV factories. This news blurb will go way overlooked by most people, even in the Tesla and EV space, because most people just aren't that into mining, and I totally get it. But if you want to talk about limiting factors from the raw material side, this is exactly what we need to happen. Manchin said major strides had been made in terms of improving permitting for critical mineral projects, saying even the environmental community has come to grips with reality. We have to do the mining, we have to do the processing, we can do it, we have to embrace it. So as part of the debt ceiling agreement that was passed last month, it sets a two-year time limit on environmental impact statements for project. It also streamlines permitting for energy storage projects. And back to limiting factors, one of the biggest hangups for Tesla Megapack deployments is actually the permitting process, and that has a huge role in when Tesla actually gets paid for said projects. The U.S. Department of the Interior is focused on updating mining regulations and laws, including driving efficiencies in the permitting system. There were a number of proposals that the administration would like to see in a permitting reform bill, and it would publish a report later this month. Some comments you love to see from Volvo's CCO. Volvo will not sell a single car that is not fully electric after 2030, regardless of the market. There's no ifs, no buts. He said there might be a few markets where we lose a little bit of sales, but focusing financial and human resources on a single powertrain technology gives Volvo the best shot at producing the most compelling EV products. You don't say. To be successful, you should focus on the growing part of the market. Last time I looked, that, the EV market, is a very strong growing market and ICE is a shrinking market. He said ICE models will get a bit of love, but we're not investing in their base technology, no deep R&D, but we can upgrade infotainment, software, and some exterior interior design. From a long-term perspective, this feels like the right move for traditional OEMs. Don't forget, check out AG1 linked below if you're interested, and don't forget Get no video from me on Friday and potentially Monday, but we'll see on that one. Either way, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.